Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today is episode 4 of our Greg Tech series where we finish up the low voltage chapter. We also dip our toes into the medium voltage edge with three multi blocks and a hell of a lot of infrastructure. Don't forget to like and subscribe to follow along for more. We'll be changing up the structure of these episodes for the next one, so stay tuned to see how that one turns out. With all that out of the way, let's begin. So to finish off the low voltage age, we need to do two things. We need to craft up some medium voltage circuits and we need to make aluminium. Aluminium is the first blast furnace recipe and this will require a bit more of an advanced blast furnace than the two we have now, the electric blast furnace. The first step into getting this is to make the coils. Tier one coils are cupra nickel. This will let us get aluminium and some stainless steel. This requires cupra nickel wires, liquid tin alloy and bronze foil. We need to make the controller next, so what we're going to do is we're going to craft up some Invar frame boxes, which is just a bunch of sticks. Then we need to craft up some heat proof machine casing, which is just some plates and the aforementioned frame box. And now we have the controller. And from the quest reward, we are going to take the magnesium phosphide, which is the low voltage superconductor. And back into the swing of things, we need to craft up a lot of our heat proof machine casings and we're going to batch craft again just so we have some spare for a second blast furnace that we'll make in the future. For our first blast furnace, we're going to need seven low voltage machine hulls to make seven different things. We're going to need two low voltage energy hatches, a muffler hatch, a maintenance hatch, two input hatches, one bus, one hatch, and an output bus. We're also going to need power for that. For the moment, the only thing we have access to is four steam turbines, which isn't going to be very good at all and will soon replace with our benzene setup. And here we are crafting up the input and output buses. This takes a machine hull, a chest and some glue. And now we begin a long journey to prospect for some ore. What we're looking for here is a lapis vein. We don't really need it because I've gone about things the wrong way, but back then I really thought I needed it. And this is what it was for. It was for crafting up a crowbar to make the maintenance hatch. Yes, I really did go all that way just for a crowbar. Next up is the energy hatches. We need to make some fine steel wire and some magnetic steel rods to get the coils and then we can make the hatches.
And now we finally get to build the electric blast furnace. Place the controller on the bottom, coils are in the middle, maintenance hatch I always place on the top, the muffler needs to go in the top middle, I put the input and output buses left and right respectively. And now that the EBF is done, we're gonna cook up our first piece of aluminium. It takes about 40 seconds and the power definitely survives this. But we get it in the end. And so with that little stockpile of aluminium that we were developing, we ended up crafting ourselves a polyethylene setup. And now this is incredibly useful for a few things. Really, polyethylene is the first plastic that we get to use uh, in this mod pack. And it is used specifically just to make all of our machines easy to make. So I'm not going to scroll through all of those, but effectively polyethylene lets us craft up the machine hull very very easily it takes away this awful step here and turns it into this uh, and obviously that's going to use the assembler and a fair amount of polyethylene but it's so much cheaper and it's gonna be better and this is used to make every single machine hull i believe up until luv um so pretty much we centrifuge out oil sands for heavy oil and this is going to be different from the quest book so the quest book recommends using naphtha um, I actually did the math on this. It's worse in terms of using oil sands. So since we're using oil sands dust, because I don't like using fluids, we go for heavy oil. We then distill the heavy oil into sulfuric heavy fuel, which is 50 to 125. Then we desulfurize that with hydrogen. This is all stopped running because we're full on ethylene. So into hydrogen, this chemical reactor elect electrolyzes the sulfur out and gives us back our hydrogen. So it's free. That's just one cell's worth. Heavy fuel then gets mixed with steam to severely steam cracked heavy fuel on circuit three. And finally, we have a basic distillery here. This is just a low voltage distilling into ethylene. Uh, and that produces us a little carbon. We get sulfur dust as a byproduct. And then in this chemical reactor here, I've just been using this one as like a temporary uh, polyethylene cyst setup. So we take our ethylene here, we mix it in with some oxygen. And then we get polyethylene and we've just been backing up that slowly. And now we get to the real meat and potatoes of this episode, crafting up our benzene setup. This is going to take a lot of machines, but the three main ones are going to be our greenhouse and our two pyrolyzed ovens. First up, we need to craft the energy hatches and we're going to need six of these. Next up, we need a lot of ULV machine casings. Each one is eight wrought iron and we need over 50 of them. And here's a look at the greenhouse. This is a multi-block that is unique to Greg Tech Community Edition. One of the main blocks we're gonna be using across this build and throughout the future are these frame boxes. Right now I'm making them out of Invar because they're cheap. We're using these because you can place pipes and wires inside them. We've also gone ahead and placed our energy hatches and we're going to be running each of these multi-blocks at medium voltage to start with. This is going to use a single gas turbine and we're going to convert it down to low voltage energy.
Each of these pyrolyzed ovens is going to need the controller, the maintenance hatch, it's going to need an input bus, an input hatch, an output hatch, and an output bus. The greenhouse 2 is going to need an input bus, an input hatch, it's going to need its power and maintenance. And of course the mufflers. These are all the materials needed to make the 32 coil blocks. We will upgrade these in the future to make our benzene setup faster, but for now they'll suffice. And now we make the controllers. The pyrolyze oven and the greenhouse need roughly the same materials, but just rotated around a little bit. While we're here, we'll also make the turbines and the transformers, and then we'll go and place them. And here's the beating heart of this setup. The distillery is going to allow us to turn our wood tar into benzene and then the benzene we can use as that burnable fuel. We need two of them eventually to support both pyrolyze ovens, but for now we only really need one. This is our wood output from greenhouse into pyrolyze oven. We also need to deal with the saplings and that's why we have that storage drawer there just to catch the overflow saplings. And now we also need to deal with the charcoal byproduct of the wood tar creation. What we're going to do is we're going to use extractors. Extractors can extract wood tar from the charcoal, which can be used to make extra benzene. This pipe layout is not final. I thought I'd just show you a bit of my design process and thinking, it's absolutely terrible, don't copy this. The final design is a little bit better. This is the better pipe layer. Because the extractors use so little power, we can run all of them off a single turbine. We're going to double the setup, and so we'll need two in the future. And here's the final setup. We have our two pyrolyzed ovens working, partially working. We have 16 extractors, two distilleries, and underneath we actually have our nitrogen setup. So we have an air collector and we have three centrifuges getting us oxygen and nitrogen. Nitrogen just makes the pyrolyzed oven recipe much quicker and cheaper in terms of power, which makes it so that we really only need one. We the second one turns on very infrequently. 
Well, and that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more updates. The next episode, we're going to try and make it to high voltage, but that's yet to be seen. You can follow along on Twitch at twitch.tv slash canned hot rice in source. And I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.